Hey everyone, it's now time to look at exchange rate determination. There are a few different systems by which the value of a currency may be determined, floating, fixed or managed. In this video, we'll be taking a look at floating exchange rates, what they are, how they're determined and their pros and cons. Let's go. In a floating system, the value of the exchange rate is determined by the market forces of supply and demand within the foreign exchange market. In comparison, under a fixed exchange rate system, the exchange rate is set at an official value by the central bank. But back to floating exchange rates. The foreign exchange market is a market where currencies from all around the world are bought and sold by those seeking to engage in overseas trade or financial transactions. If someone in the United States wants to invest in an Australian company, that investor needs to buy Australian dollars. To fund that purchase, they'll need to sell some American dollars. Okay, but what does this have to do with supply and demand? Well, Australian dollar supply refers to those who want to sell Australian dollars. So an increase in imports and an increase in investment outflows both constitute an increase in Australian dollar supply. This is because Australians seeking to buy from or invest in overseas markets must sell Australian dollars to buy the necessary foreign currencies. Australian dollar demand refers to those who want to buy Australian dollars. So an increase in exports and an increase in investment inflows both represent an increase in Australian dollar demand. This is because those wishing to buy Australian products or invest here must buy Australian dollars to do so. The distinction between demand and supply can be quite confusing. It might be helpful to think of Australian dollar demand as money coming into the Australian economy and Australian dollar supply as money leaving the Australian economy. Supply and demand determine the value of the Australian dollar in the same way as for any good or service. We model Australian dollar supply and demand on a diagram like this, with the price of the Australian dollar on the vertical axis and quantity of Australian dollars on the horizontal axis. The point where the supply and demand graphs meet, the equilibrium, determines the value of the exchange rate. The exchange rate changes any time there is a shift in Australian dollar demand or supply. Any increase in Australian dollar demand will shift the demand curve to the right from D to D1. We see that the price of Australian dollars increases from P to P1. Here is a good place to note that under a floating system, an increase in the price of Australian dollars is referred to as an appreciation. This means that the Australian dollar is now stronger and can buy more foreign currency than before. On the other hand, any fall in the price of Australian dollars is a depreciation. The dollar is now weaker and can't buy as much foreign currency as it could before. Back to what I was saying. So an increase in demand for Australian dollars causes an Australian dollar appreciation. Alternatively, a decrease in demand for Australian dollars causes the demand curve to shift left from D to D2, driving an Australian dollar depreciation as P falls to P2. On the supply side of things, an increase in Australian dollar supply causes the supply curve to shift to the right from S to S1. The price of Australian dollars falls from P to P2, meaning that the dollar has depreciated. When the supply of Australian dollars falls, the supply curve shifts leftwards from S to S2. The price of Australian dollars increases from P to P2, so the Aussie dollar has appreciated. Alrighty. Now we know what a floating exchange rate system is and how it functions. But what are its pros and cons? On the positive side of things, economists generally prefer when the value of the exchange rate reflects market supply and demand, rather than being determined by the central bank. As with many parts of the economy, government intervention is generally undesirable. A floating exchange rate can also help the economy adjust to undesirable trends or shocks. For example, let's say that the Australian economy is in recession. These bleak economic conditions will likely cause an Australian dollar depreciation by dampening demand for the Aussie dollar. The weaker Australian dollar means that Australian goods and services will become cheaper on global markets, actually encouraging overseas consumers to buy Aussie products. Import spending will fall as imports become more expensive. Net exports will therefore increase, boosting aggregate demand and economic growth, helping to mitigate the initial recession. However, a notable shortfall of a floating exchange rate system is that it leaves the currency vulnerable to speculators, 
Agents who buy and sell currencies based on predicted future movements of the currency, aiming to make financial gain. Speculation contributes to exchange rate volatility, worsening uncertainty within the economy. Okay, that's it for this video. We covered a lot of content, so let's summarize. We defined a floating exchange rate as one determined by the market forces of supply and demand within the foreign exchange market. Demand refers to those buying the dollar or money coming into the economy. Supply refers to those selling the dollar or money leaving the economy. We know that the Australian dollar will appreciate when demand for the dollar increases or supply falls. The dollar will depreciate when demand for the dollar falls or supply increases. Whenever you're asked to evaluate the effect of a shift in demand or supply on the value of the exchange rate, make sure to sketch out the supply and demand graph as we did. It'll be a huge help. We finished up by taking a quick look at the pros and cons of a floating exchange rate system. Okay, let's wrap it up there. Thanks everyone.